A big personality and bigger saves are what makes Roberto Luongo one of the most iconic goaltenders of his generation. Following his successful junior career, the Montreal native was selected fourth overall by the New York Islanders at the 1997 NHL Draft. At the time, he was the highest selected goaltender in league history. After one season with the Isles, Luongo was traded to the Panthers, where his star truly began to shine. What a stop by Roberto Luongo! Oh my goodness! Oh, Roberto! During his first stint in Florida, Luongo proved to be a relentless worker, setting multiple franchise and NHL records in saves, shots faced, and games played. Highlighted by a then Panthers record 35 wins in 75 games during the 05 06 season. Oh, what a save off the stick of Le Cavalier who looks at the skies. The following campaign, the All Star goaltender was traded to the Vancouver Canucks, joining his Hall of Fame classmates, Henrik and Daniel Sedin. That season, he would notch 47 wins, helping propel the Canucks to first in the Northwest Division. Brower with a long shot, rebound, oh, and a save! Luongo just robbed Ben Eager, that's unbelievable! Luongo's leadership, on the ice and in the dressing room, was rewarded when the Canucks named him team captain, despite the NHL's rule that prohibits goaltenders from serving the role. During two seasons as captain, he was not allowed to wear the C on his jersey, so Luongo had the letter added into his mask design. In 2011, he led the league with 38 wins, helping guide the Canucks to the President's Trophy and to the Stanley Cup Final against Boston, ultimately falling short in Game 7. Success would come on the international stage for Luongo winning a World Cup of Hockey, two golds at the IIHF World Hockey Championship, and was a member of three Olympic teams, winning gold medals on home soil at Vancouver 2010, and again in Russia at Sochi 2014. I'm just happy that I was able to win this for Canada, Vancouver, and myself. At the end of the day, I'm a gold medalist, and nobody could ever take that away from me. Luongo was traded back to the Panthers at the 2014 trade deadline. During his second spell in Sunrise, Luongo became the all-time franchise leader in games played, wins, and shutouts. He also moved into second place for most games played by a goalie in NHL history. He currently sits fourth in the NHL in all-time wins and ninth in all-time shutouts. The Panthers retired his iconic number one in 2020, becoming the first player in franchise history to earn this honor. After years of turning away shooters, the Hall of Fame now opens its door to this legendary netminder. To present Roberto Luongo his Hall of Fame plaque, 2014 inductee Dominic Hasek. You guys nice and relaxed now that your speeches are done? I'm the only one stressing up here. Yeah. Um, well, Dominic Hashek, that's the first time I ever meet him in person, so thank you for that. That was uh, incredible. Um, he, is, he, is a, he is a true legend and one of the best goalies ever, and uh, I'm, I don't think everybody's going to play like him again, but it was unbelievable to watch. Um, I'd like to start off just by thanking the selection committee, Lanny and Mike. Uh, thank you so much for this tremendous honor. Uh, Kelly Massey organizing this whole weekend. It's been unbelievable. Um, my family and I are ecstatic of all the activities we got to celebrate together, and uh, we really want to thank you for that. I want to thank the, uh, congratulate the inductees, the uh, Carnegie family. It's a, truly an honor to be part of this with you guys, uh, to know, get to know you over the weekend. Alfie, congratulations. Uh, Rika. And 
obviously Hank and Danny. Um, when I got the call, the first thing I asked was if you guys were in too because uh, I wanted it so bad to go in with you guys. Um, just being your teammates for eight years uh, was such an honor and I'm proud to say that I play with you guys because um, just watching you, not on the ice, but also in the locker room as people, um, I hold you in such high regards um, that um, it's tough to put into words because you guys had so much pressure on you every night, you know, as the face of the franchise and you guys never deviated from who you were. You were always positive uh, and we looked up to you, not only myself, but I know everybody in the locker room looked up to you guys. Um, that you guys are leading the way for our club and uh, it really brought us along, so thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you guys, um, I'm up here tonight but I I'm actually the lucky one because I'm going to go through a list of people here in the next few minutes and the only reason I'm here is because of them. Um, if it wasn't for them, I would not be here, I can tell you that. So I'm just going to start talking about maybe my childhood and my parents, uh, they worked uh, when I was a kid. So I used to go to my grandparents' house and they would babysit me every day. So, you know, I started loving hockey and I was, I was alone with my grandmother every day. And I was like, Grandma, do you want to go downstairs and play hockey in the basement? So I, I throw an apron on her with an oven mitt and a frying pan. I stick her by the table and that was the goal. I'd shoot pucks at her all day long, and uh, she seemed to enjoy it. I don't know, but uh, uh, my grandpa uh, actually passed away a couple months ago. Um, he bought me uh, one, of, one of my first set of pads. Um, so we went to the store one day, and back in the day, I, um, my team was red, white, and blue. So we get to the store, and uh, we're looking at pads, and... You know, we're looking at this one, this one, this one. All of a sudden, my grandfather was at the cash register with a set of pads. I go over to him and I go, these are the ones you're buying. They're black and gray. I said, they don't match. And he goes, yeah, but I, I'm the one buying them, so you have to just accept what, what I'm getting you. And I was like, okay, no problem. But the funniest part about that story was when the price rung up, it was $1,000. And he looked at me and he goes, is that for one pad or for both? <laughs> I said, no, it's for both. You're good. Don't worry about it. Um, a lot of people have, me have mentioned, like, my work ethic and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I just want to let you guys know that that came from my mom and dad. Um, you know, as a kid, um, we were not really well off. And, uh, you know, my dad would work every day. My mom would work every day. And they worked hard. And they taught that to me as a young age. And as a young kid, I would go with my dad and help him build uh, bedroom sets when we were kids. So um, I'm really appreciative of the lessons that they installed in me at a young age that I carried through my adulthood and I'm trying to instill in my children today. We were, we were three brothers in the house. All three of us were goalies. I was the oldest one. Um, so we were busy. We were busy. Um, we had a lot of battles. Uh, we played in hockey in the basement every single night we destroyed it, like the walls were done, but uh, we had such great times and such not so great times. Uh, a lot of tears, a lot of laughter, but uh, I just want to say to Leo and Fabio that um, thank you guys for being there for me all these years, not only when we were kids, but as I grew up and I had some troubles and you guys always had my back and you always were there for me when I needed somebody to talk to and it really meant a lot to me. Thank you. You know, a, a, small, a small part of me does feel bad because they never made it, you know. Um, so I really want them to cherish this moment with me because I feel that without them, I wouldn't be here today and I wish that they could have lived the same moments that I did throughout my career um, because I know that's what they wanted as well when they were young. Um, I got a ton of friends here tonight. I got about 12, 13 friends and uh, they've, they've been... We've been the same pack of guys for, since I was a kid, and they traveled all over the world to see me throughout my career, whether it was in Europe, in the United States, no matter what, they always supported me. So thanks, guys, and thanks for being here tonight. Um, so
Something that I've been thinking a lot about since I retired is all the people that have come across my path, whether it was a coach uh, or a teacher, whatever it was, and I always say to myself, if one of these people did not believe in me, I wonder where I would be. Probably not here today. And that's why all these people that, that came across that, that I worked with, whether it was a goalie coach or a coach, it was so important to me in my life that I just want to mention them by name. And uh, some of them will you, you'll, you'll sound familiar, but some of them might, maybe not. But uh, my, the first goalie coach that really believed in me, his name was Mario Barry. Um, I was in Bantam and I went to try out for a midget triple A team, but I was still Bantam age. Uh, so I, I didn't expect to make the team. And he's, he's the one that saw some potential in me um, and decided to choose me as an underager to be in the midget triple A team, which propelled me to get drafted the following season. Um, once I became a teenager, I started to learn more about the position and more the technicality about it. I started working with Francois Lair. Um He's the one that was uh, Patrick Roy's goalie coach back in the day when he was with the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, he really taught me everything I know technically um, throughout my career. And it really elevated my game to just being a Grand Fuhrer lover to a, a, you know, a goalie that actually has some structure. Merci beaucoup, Francois. I've had a chance to work with so many good goalie coaches in the NHL. Uh, Clint Malarchuk in Florida, uh, Roly Melanson in Vancouver, Ian Clark in Florida and Vancouver, and last but not least, my boy Rob Tallis here. Uh, we uh, ended the end of my career together. Uh, the last few years, Rob was amazing. Uh, thank you for always supporting me. A couple of minor league coaches that really uh, that believed in me, that you know, chose me on their team. That um, I just wanted to shout out as Tony Canuto and Alain Fauché. Uh, those two coaches really made a change in my life uh, when I was in uh, minor hockey, and I think it really helped me um, just gain a little bit of self-confidence and uh, you know, move on to the next level. Uh, my agents, uh, the late Gilles Lupien. Uh, I remember when I was 15, uh, he came to the rink, and he was he was huge. I think he was like six seven. Uh, and he came over to the rink one day, and I was sitting there with my mom, and he said, uh, you guys need to be ready because your son won't be living at home anymore. Um, so that was kind of a shock at 15 years old, and I remember my mom <laughs> was saying, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, it means that you're, you're going to be moving away. So um, I don't know if you guys understand what Italian families are like, but you don't move away when you're 15 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you move away when you get married. So. Some of my friends are still living at home, so I just want to... <laughs> um, later, uh, later on in my career, I moved on to Pat Brisson, uh, helped me uh, facilitate the trade uh, back to Florida, and uh, really was a great friend to me in the last few years, so thank you, Pat, for being here. Um, so when I did finally get drafted into junior, um, believe it or not, I got drafted to the furthest city away from Montreal as possible. Uh, I just remember sitting there on the draft floor, and uh, the city was the Favard de Valdau. When they called my name, the first thing I looked at was my, <laughs> was my mom, and uh, she gave me the look, you know? Like, not impressed, five and a half hour drive. <laughs> um, but luck would have it when I got there, I got to stay with an Italian family, and the transition was great. Uh, their name was Maria and Gaetano. Uh, they were great to me, and for me, it became like a second family, and the transition was smooth. And I think at the same time, it really eased the hearts of my parents and their, their worries that their son was so far away. My last year junior, I got traded away to Bathurst, and I uh, moved in with a family, uh, Lou and Jane Wallette, which was two of the nicest people you'll ever meet, so I just wanted to thank them as well. Every summer I would work out, in, our home base was in Florida, and I would work out there in the summertime. And I had uh, this trainer, Manny, an ex-Marine, that uh, would train me every summer. And one of the things he liked to do is he liked to make me push his truck in the parking lot. I didn't, li I didn't like it that much, to be honest with you. Um, then one year, the season was over. I show up to the gym, and 
Manny goes to me, hey, Luke, come see what I just bought. So I go in the parking lot, and he had just bought an old Hummer. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those. They weigh about 5,000 pounds. So that was my last off season. <laughs> um, I've been part of three franchises. Obviously, um, I got drafted by the New York Islanders. So I just want to thank them um, at the time for believing in me. I think even though uh, my stint there was very short, um, it's still memorable because that's where I first started um, and played my first ever game. I played for Vancouver Canucks and the Florida Panthers, and a lot of people have asked me, you know, who would you go in with and all that kind of stuff. But to be honest with you, both franchises mean so much to me, and they're both equally important. I had my best moments in Vancouver. I got to a Stanley Cup final. Um, I got to appreciate things more uh, during the difficult times, and I think they demanded a lot out of me, and uh, I expected a lot out of myself, and I think they helped me push me to become a better player, and most importantly, a better person. Uh, with the Panthers, you know, when I, when I came back on my second stint, I was, I was dead set on that I wanted to make the playoffs with them. I, had never, I hadn't had a chance in the first time around. And when I got traded back, I thought that this was the, um, a lot of people thought I was going to right into the sunset, as they said, but for me, it was, it was um, I really wanted to witness a playoff series with that team, and we got a chance to do that against the Islanders. We lost, but it was still fun. Uh, the best part about playing goal is having a goalie partner, and I had some great ones. My first one um, was Kevin Weeks with the New York Islanders. You guys all know Weeksy, obviously. Uh, what a great character and a great guy. And uh, we were actually two young guys the first year, and uh, it was fun to just, you know, push each other and, and be better. One of my favorite goalie partners was Noodles, Jamie McLennan. Back in the day, I was playing 75 games a year. He only played five, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> um, but the funny story was one, one game, in the first period, I, I took a hard slap shot in the hand, and it, was, it, it hurt bad. So during the first TV timeout, I skated over the bench, and I said, Noodles, bud, listen, I think my hand might be broken. You're going to have to go in this game. I'm sorry. He's like, he looks at me and goes, you're fine. Shake it off. <laughs> um, one of my best goalie partners is Corey Schneider. Um, not only was he my best partner, he was an awesome guy. And I don't know if you guys know this, but he played an American Hockey League game on Saturday. And Sunday, he came over here to play in the Legends game, which, by the way, scored two goals, if you guys didn't know, uh, to play in the Hall of Fame game. That, that is, that's crazy, just to show you how good a guy he is. But we got along so great, and we pushed each other so hard. And obviously, you guys saw that we did a skit together just because of, there was a lot of turmoil within the city. But me and Corey, we knew that uh, you know, that wasn't the case, so we wanted to show everybody that uh, we wanted to uh, show that we're friends. And hey. Two goalies is not what it, what it takes nowadays to be a good team. I also wanted to give a special shout out to Danny Sabrin, who came in relief uh, when I had my bathroom shenanigans that one game in the playoffs. Uh, uh, when I first got traded to Florida, I was single, obviously, and I was 21 years old. I did not know where to go. And I remember after one practice, Scott Mellenby, came up to me, he's like, hey, I want to take you to this Italian place. It's right down the street from the practice rink. The, the owner wants to meet you. I said, sure. You know, it was right by where I lived, so it was perfect. So I go over there, and uh, I meet the owner, six foot five Italian, uh, great guy, and we became friends. And, you know, after a little bit of time, he started inviting me over to the house. I was having dinner there. It was great. It was like another family. So. Um, wouldn't you know it, they had a daughter. <laughs> and that happens to be the love of my life. So, yeah. so, but now I have three loves in my life because I also have two beautiful kids, Gabrielle and Gianni. that I am so proud of. 
Um, you guys are growing so fast, too fast. And it's tough to watch, but every day I, I look at you guys and as I'm sure Gina and I feel tremendous amount of pride in the way you guys are growing. Uh, when I watch you dance, it brings me joy and pride seeing you float in the air like that. And now my little boy, Gigi, he is a goaltender. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, what the hell is he thinking? <laughs> but it's funny because I watch him play and I get all the same emotions as when I play, except that now I'm actually more nervous because I don't control it and I want him to do well every single game. And I am proud of you, no matter what, remember that. Um, and finally, uh, the love of my life, Gina, my rock. Um, it's been a long journey. It's been tough. And like Hank and Danny said, you know, a lot of times you were left on your own because we were on the road playing cards, winning our cards mostly for me. I don't know. But, uh, and you were, you know, holding down the fort at home. And uh, as athletes, sometimes you take that a little bit for granted. But um, I just want to say that I admire you. Um, and I love you so much. And thank you for everything. Thank you, guys. Uh, just amazing speeches again tonight from a true, truly wonderful class. The congratulations once again to Daniel Alfredson, to Rika Salonen, to the Carnegie family, to Daniel and Henrik, and finally to Roberto Luongo. After reviewing all of your careers tonight, hockey fans everywhere, we want to thank each inductee for 